Let's add a bit more about uh, adaptation in terms of making cities green, resilient and inclusive in a changing climate. This is another comprehensive World Bank group report which means it's fairly long, has a lot of data, a lot of plots, but since I'm already uh, packing this series of podcasts with lots of material, I'm also going to keep this very brief so that you can always go back to the original report and read the details. And really, there are some excellent references, data, indices, and uh, plots, graphics that I'm not going to show. So it's called Thriving uh, by this World Bank group authors. We will read the main messages and take a quick overview and then visit some other uh, details from each chapter subjectively selected by me as being important enough to highlight. And then we'll look at the second report on urban forests, I think, but I'm not sure if I'll include that. Uh, main messages here from this World Bank report between 1970 and 2021, the number of people living in cities increased from 1.19 billion to 4.46 billion, while the Earth's surface temperature climbed by 1.19 degrees, cent <coughs> 1 degrees centigrade above its pre-industrial level. So population grow has grown across the planet, but more and more people are moving into uh, urban areas and it's expected to continue for a while. Obviously there are attractions for people who like energetic lives, lives and people uh, who are interested in entrepreneurship, innovation, but also poor people who are seeking employment because typically urban centers offer more employment opportunities. There are several as issues associated with those in terms of housing, sanitation, health, energy, etc. But let's not go into that right now. We'll visit some of those as a part of making urban centers resilient. Because of the prosperity they have helped generate, cities have been a major cause of this climate change as well. It's also in cities, however, that many of the solutions to climate crisis will be found, not least because twen by 2050, almost 70% of the world's population will call cities home. This descriptor climate crisis is used uh, very casually, but honestly, I don't agree with it at all because everybody's life is going on uh, quite normally, uh, especially climate scientists attending meetings, publishing, talking about climate change, need for climate solutions, adaptation, this and that. But really, how is life supposed to look when you are in a climate crisis? I don't think anybody can tell you. So simply using this as a, you know, sledgehammer, I'm not sure has much value. It just becomes normalized and a part of life. And people think if this is climate crisis, then it's okay. Then you have actually lost the battle. This report combines original empirical analysis of a global sample of more than 10,000 cities with insights from secondary literature to take stock of how green, how resilient and how inclusive cities are today and to examine the two-way interplay between cities and climate change. Informed by this analysis, the report provides a compass for policymakers on how to help their cities become greener, more resilient and more inclusive, in other words, on how to help the s their cities thrive in a changing climate. So uh, let's keep reading a bit more. but. There are metrics to measure these things. When you say take stock of how green, how resilient and how inclusive, you need indicators or metrics to evaluate and uh, you know assess them and to monitor progress. This is always critical. Changing climate, we already gone through many of this in various other uh, courses already, so you won't read too much of the climate change itself, which is uh, several chapters in this book. Climate change is exposing cities to increasingly frequent extreme weather events from 1970s to the period of 2010 to 2020. The frequency of extreme heat and dry events uh, increased across the cities globally and the frequency of extreme wet events have increased since the 1990s. Global sea level rise of 0.125 millimeters per year is also increasing the risk of flooding for coastal cities. So while we discussed climate change in the previous podcasts and courses, we looked generally at uh, 
global, regional and local, but not necessarily focused on cities. So maybe it's okay to read a few of these. Uh, continuing with how green, how resilient and how inclusive are cities. Cities in high and upper middle income countries are major contributors to climate change, whereas the contribution of cities in lower income countries is modest. Okay, so there is a disproportionately high contribution to climate change from urban centers in high income countries. Typically, they attract richer people with their uh, lifestyles. Okay, so you have to always be aware of these uh, differences between cities uh, in rich countries versus lower income countries. Cities in low and lower middle income countries face the highest exposure to projected climate change related hazards. Okay, so any projections will have uncertainty, especially because sea level rise, for example, is much more easily trackable, trackable, tractable at global levels, but to actually produce it at a local level for a city like uh, Mumbai or you know Ho Chi Minh City and so on it's not that easy but nonetheless cities in low and lower middle income countries are less resilient to increasingly frequent climate change related shocks and stresses okay so obviously I'm not reading all the text as you notice so you should definitely go back and read those if you're keen. Cities suffer indirect impacts of climate change, especially in low and lower middle income countries. Okay, Indirect impact. These indirect impacts occur through a variety of channels. For example, when extreme weather events hit, people in the countryside often seek safe harbor in cities. Extended droughts in rural areas result in faster expansion of urban areas. The resulting new settlements are often informal and established in the outskirts of cities in urban plates with limited access to services. So these are the indirect effects. Construction in countries is gravitating towards cities that will be more affected by climate change. So sea level rise is combining with sometimes cyclones, inundation, storm surge, extreme heavy rainfall events, and then more and more people are moving in. Real estate price, in fact, keeps going up. Places like San Francisco, Mumbai, Bangalore, and so on are examples of cities that tend to ignore climate risks as they keep growing. Lack of inclusiveness contributes to the lack of resilience of cities in low and lower middle income countries. This lack of resilience can be explained in part by these cities' high rates, higher rates of poverty and low, lower levels of access to basic services such as healthcare and education, water, electricity and other utilities, solid waste management, digital and financial services and emergency rescue services. Okay? Cities in low and middle income countries are less green in terms of air pollution and air pollution from key urban sectors presents a greater challenge for larger cities in countries at all income levels. The good example in India for example is that New Delhi is very well known for its uh, pollution problems. Mumbai which is on a coast is less polluted but it is unhealthy still and people keep on thinking Mumbai is much better than Delhi without realizing that both are unhealthy anyways, okay? especially when it comes to particulate matters. Policies that improve air quality can help cities both mitigate and adapt to climate change. Cities that develop vertically, con uh, vertically consume less land, accommodate more people and are more prosperous. So we look at some numbers on how you know, historically uh, high rises have increased in number and how that's related to the arrival of elevators, for example, which made it easier to build higher and higher and so on. And obviously that uh, also increases population density by packing so many people into buildings in you know, smaller and smaller horizontal uh, areas. Lack of vegetation, especially evident in large cities and cities in upper middle income countries can exacerbate the impacts of extreme heat events in cities. So extreme heat events uh, do not affect all the people in even in a small city like Manhattan or Mumbai the same way because poor neighborhoods don't have air conditionings, they have to use public transportation, they may not have access to shelters or hydration centers, uh, rescue uh, efforts and so on and so forth. 
We'll look at a policy compass to help cities thrive. A thriving city is one that is green, resilient and inclusive in the face of a changing climate. This report presents general conclusions related to the realization of this vision in the form of three questions policymakers should answer. What policy instruments are available? Who wields these instruments? How can policy choices based on these instruments be prioritized and sequenced for effective implementation? So as we saw before, how you define vulnerability and risk can tend to uh, change priorities. If you focus on well-being, you may get one set of policies and actions and instruments and their uh, implementation or prioritization versus if you ask about uh, risks to assets or real estate prices and so on. So inclusivity has to then cover these aspects of asking the correct screening questions, developing the correct metrics that help. So in that what, who and how becomes important, policy options take the form of five I's, information, incentives, insurance, integration and investments. We'll look at this in a bit more detail but still very briefly. In many instances the interdependencies between these set of instruments play out in complementary ways wherein policies ac across the bound uh, Bound, bu sorry, wherein policies across the bundles strengthen impacts when implemented together. Who? Because traditional urban stresses interact with the climate change related stresses to determine outcomes, local governments are well placed to drive climate action. Cities working with other stakeholders including national governments, the private sector and civil society have an impact uh, oh, sorry, have an important policy wedge at their disposal. Sorry, I'm fumbling a little bit. How? To ensure th their cities thrive, policymakers will need to toggle between and sandwich together bundles of policy options drawn from the five eyes we just mentioned and we will look at again. A combination of interventions, their sequencing and prioritization of outcomes will vary depending on the characteristics of cities including their levels of risk, level of development and size. Okay, So that's kind of the uh, executive summary let's say. We'll come back and look at the overview and then go through some details from each chapter. Okay, So this is the set of podcasts on how to bring about urban resilience that is inclusive, make the cities thrive in a climate uh, change scenario. Already climate is changing, cities are disproportionately uh, higher contributors to emissions and land use and climate change in general. There is a strong breeze, I closed the window but I'm getting it through the other room hard to live without AC and do this at home because I have to manage various things including the sound quality. I'll check and make sure it's okay. All right.